Not everything we saw in Empire Strikes Back was final, especially the scenes on Dagobah, where Luke Skywalker goes into the dark side cave that Yoda insinuates will change something in him. You see, back in the day, there were these comics called Star Wars Infinities, and in those comics, we see sort of deleted scenes, or at the very least, notes that were left on the cutting room floor that George Lucas didn't end up using. And these comics show exactly what an alternate version version of those films could actually be about. And I'm here to tell you that Luke experienced something completely different in that alternate timeline, where it isn't all great. Empire Strikes Back is a dark movie, but with this comic, you're gonna see that it was going to be, originally by George Lucas, a lot, lot darker. In the first issue, we see that Luke actually fails to destroy the Death Star, and Leia is actually captured by the Empire. Leia slowly was starting to be tempted by the dark side, by power. In the meantime, a young Luke was building his way up to become a Jedi Knight, training under Yoda. We open on Ord Mantel, inside a skeevy cantina. Han, together with Chewie, is waiting for someone. In fact, today, it was the fifth anniversary of the end of the rebellion. Han is truly amazed that five years have passed since those events, and he hopes that Luke is still okay on Dagobah. But at that moment, stormtroopers started walking in. He told Chewie to look natural. In the meantime, they were watching an Imperial broadcast. The Empire celebrating five years of peace and prosperity in the square of Coruscant, the epicenter of the Empire. Their main spokesman was none other than the former rebel leader, Leia Organa. Han is left completely shocked, as well as Chewie. They see Leia saluting the Empire. She said the following, As you all know, I once led an ill-conceived violent insurrection against the Empire, a rebellion that cost the lives of many beings. Though I may never be able to forgive myself, the Empire has forgiven me. The war is over. It is time for restoring order. Leia said confidently, standing before the Empire. Empire. Her last words to the delegation, long live the new empire. It's just not possible, Han couldn't believe it. He hit the screen with a metal pipe, crushing it completely. Suddenly, everyone at the cantina was staring at him. He, uh, a big bug, I, I think I killed it, said Han. They left as quickly as possible, but pirates immediately noticed that that was Han Solo, the smuggler that Jabba had put a fat price on his head. Han being used to this sort of life, he immediately noticed that they got company. They started running for their lives. Now through the scuffle, the stormtrooper were interested in this situation as well. The gang had nowhere to run. In the craziness of the moment, they ended up stealing a transport from the Jawas, using this to escape from an angry mob. But they weren't paying attention to the road. They hit a stormtrooper transport, running as quickly as possible, running for their lives. They headed for the Millennium Falcon, boarded it, and headed off Ord Mantel. However, a Star Destroyer was right behind them, and a brigade of TIE Fighters. Seeing no other recourse, Han punched into Hyper space. To him, it was time to get down to business. He told Chewie to set course for Dagobah. Now we see an older Luke, wearing his black garb, living in the moment, living in the now, using the force to meditate. Yoda was quite proud. He was able to calm his mind, learn patience, and release anger from his spirit. Indeed, he was pleased. But Luke had other troubles. He was having visions more and more. This meant that he was ready to return to the cave. Only there will he be able to complete his training. Before Luke went in, he turned over his lightsaber to Yoda. He had learned the lesson from before. The cave was still as dark and mysterious as he remembered. Walking very slowly, Again, Vader appeared, ignited his red blade, and slashed at a defenseless Luke without a lightsaber. He missed him just by a fraction. Now, Luke's vision were completely intertwined. Leia, long live the Empire.
His vision left him perplexed. Suddenly, someone grabbed his attention. It was Han. He finally came back to Dagobah. Luke knew he would return someday, but Han had another reason for being here. He told Luke that Leia is in fact alive. Somehow, Luke knew. I've always felt her presence. Well, it ain't all good news, kid. I don't know how to say it, so I guess I'll just say it. She's serving the Empire on Coruscant. Luke could not believe it. She can't be acting on her own accord. They had to leave now and get her out of there. Again, as always, Han protested. He is concerned a lot about Leia, but waltzing into the Imperial throne seems really like a bad idea. Yoda intervened. He told him that your friend is right. He is still not ready. Luke was shocked to hear this. Five years of Jedi training, and he passed the trial in the cave. His training is complete. Yoda agreed he must go, but ready he is not until he hears the complete truth. The truth was that Vader was his father. Seduced by the dark side was your father. Luke was completely berserk. How could you keep this from me? With great reason. If they had told him the truth, it would have only increased his impatience and his anger. Yoda continued. There is one more thing that he has to tell him. Leia is your sister. Luke appeared to be fairly calm. Yes, the visions, now they make sense. It's all so clear now. They were connected. They had a sibling bond. Right at that moment, Ben Kenobi appeared as well. He was gravely concerned about Leia. Her sadness and the anger at the destruction of Alderaan put her at great risk to fall to the dark side. Yoda was wary of this. The Emperor had sought the son of Vader as his heir, but the daughter of Vader would serve just as well. Even with two prominent Jedi Masters at his side, Luke still didn't know what to do. Han knowing full well that he can't talk Luke out of it, he offered him a ride to take him to Coruscant himself. He owes Leia at least that much, and he owed Yoda for the food that he's eaten. He was now ready for a ride in his vessel, ready to leave Dagobah once and for all. Besides, long has it been since he had sat on the temple of the Jedi, many fond memories he had of Coruscant. The Imperial fleet was as powerful as ever. A number of Star Destroyers circling the Death Star, guarding Coruscant 24-7. A momentous day for the Empire, said Leia. Today the galaxy changes forever. Peace, unity, order. Yes, Vader agrees. If only the Emperor had been well enough to be with us. But perhaps it is better this way, Leia said. It is the dawn of a new era. The future should be built for those who will live in it. She was slowly being gripped by the dark side. As her father did once, she would do whatever it take to protect her empire. A future of peace and order. If the Emperor had to die to achieve that, well then so be it. Now our band of heroes was approaching Coruscant. Han just wanted to remind them that they can leave anytime they want. Indeed, Yoda was looking forward to the Emperor's celebration. Let him think that there is no rebellion. Let the Emperor think that he is without opponents. So after all this, you clearly see what I mean. It is something very, very different. A different, completely different timeline that George Lucas didn't end up using. And of course, the original series is actually that great that it made such an impact, we're talking about it, more than 40 years later. However, if you want to see a different, total different Star Wars, and I suggest you go read Star Wars Infinities because as per usual, I still stick with that, that Star Wars comics are an extension of what we see in the movies. They are something different, something to experiment with, and Star Wars Infinities, even though they are legends, they are one of the best comic stories you could ever read.